Hello everyone, uh, me, Ethan, and Josh thought we would start this year off with something uh, quite light. Why 2022 will be the worst year ever. Ooh. Not again, not another one. Only early January. Let's let's ruin the year already. The Economist published an article the other day that said COVID-19 is likely to fade away in 2022. Yes! The magazine said a year ago, it was that the COVID-19 pandemic will be over by the end of 2021. Nah, but they mean, it. they mean it this year. Until the fat lady sinks, as the saying goes. And as things stand right now, a new strain of the virus with a name that uh. sounds like a transformer is on the scene. The question is, how many more strains will we have to endure in the future? As we write this, the World Health Organization is telling us that the Omicron variant of the virus has a high risk of infection on a global scale. So much for the pandemic easing up by the end of 2021. <laughs> it probably seems to many of you that just when you're getting comfortable and thinking you're seeing the end of the apocalyptic headlines, you get hit over the head with something new. Living yeah. through the COVID-19 pandemic is like starring in Groundhog Day. It's frankly depressing when late in 2021, you read the BBC website and see the WHO saying things like, COVID-19 is not done with us. Omicron <laughs> has an unprecedented number of spike mutations, some of which are concerning for their potential impact on the trajectory of the pandemic. Will it ever let up? Yes, please. It's not just yet. With the WHO saying oh, earlier this year that once all these. the Greek alphabet has been Kappa. exhausted, Kappa. we might start naming new variants after constellations of stars. There are only 24 letters in the Greek alphabet, but there are 88 constellations. Maybe if we run out of them, we can start naming new variants after stars, of which there are only around 200 billion just in our galaxy. Oh, okay, nice. Although most can we name them after named. people? One scientist said the virus yeah, I've always said that. Like, time. Imagine Simon, Simon patient zero is like Steve. We got Steve variant. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and it will make yeah. us like dislike certain people just because of their name. Karen variant. No one wants the Karen variant. <laughs> the Karen variant's <laughs> awful. Limited amount of genetic variation that a virus genome can withstand and still remain easily transmitted. He said, in other words, a bottleneck will occur, and then during genome replication, it'll weaken. Yeah. That's the good news. But the bad news is that it seems when the end of the year comes around, we will still be dealing with variants that could be dangerous enough to have the government announce more lockdowns. That in mind, we are <laughs> that social distancing, mask wearing, and even lockdowns are more than possible for next year. We know what getting the virus does to the body, but how will lockdowns and distancing and general COVID stress affect us next year? We promise we'll talk about the lighter topic of world ending killer asteroids soon. More bad okay. news right. means more stress. This year, numerous news media were publishing stories with headlines similar to this one. U.S. adults report highest stress levels since early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. And what does prolonged stress do to the body? It weakens our immune systems. Can oh, our no, dishes, it's a cycle. As well as depression and anxiety. And what do some people do to deal with such stress? Jeez. Many of them turn to drugs and alcohol. As we said last year, the news media reported an increase of drug abuse in the USA during the first lockdowns. That includes legal drugs, too, such as alcohol. In August this year, the BBC reported pandemic alcohol abuse linked to depression. I did rise. it. The article said people were using alcohol as a means to cope with the lockdown. Yeah. The lockdowns not only have caused an increase in deaths as a result of liver-related diseases in the UK by 21%, what? but have also had immeasurable damage on the mental well-being of everyone. So, unfortunately, what damage has been caused by lockdowns will present itself next year or over the following years. And because I regret of watching COVID this video already, you know. While, Same. I, mean, I did say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just the Brits who are feeling the weight of COVID, though. In October this year, an article in The Lancet said, We estimate an additional 53.2 million cases of major depressive disorder globally, an oh, no. increase of 27.6% due to the COVID-19 pandemic. same graph. The pandemic has not only created new problems, this but it's making already existing problems worse. Earlier in the year, the media was saying the billionaires of the world got 54% richer, just as most of everyone else was suffering the hardships of the pandemic. The World Bank in 2021 said COVID has caused rising poverty and widening inequality on a global scale. It said the poorest have been hit the worst and they haven't recovered what they've lost, while the people just above have recovered a bit, but are still on the losing side of average. One of the billionaires who had done well during the pandemic is Bill Gates, a man who'd been locked down at times in one of his palatial estates that had a total value of $170 million. <laughs> He recently announced that we will get the pandemic under control, but it won't be until at least the summer uh, of 2022. Summer 2022. Yeah, we'll be dying from no, COVID a small New Drake album. Year. It sucks yeah. to be poor, and we doubt 2022 yeah, will Adam's suddenly own. see a change in inequality. It will be another year in which we see the effects of job loss, savings loss, and general standard of living's loss, which, as you all know, can lead to mental health issues as well as sickness and instability in families. 
Some people turn to crime when life has kicked them in the face more than once. One of the things we've seen a worrying rise in is the animations on this do kill the me. FBI said this all <laughs> seems to have been a trend during the pandemic, stating that from 2020 to 2021, it saw an increase of one million cybercrime events. Think about it. More people have been thrust into poverty. Meanwhile, during the lockdowns, more folks have been doing more things online, such as buying stuff and doing their banking. Not to mention the increased number of people working from home and inputting sometimes sensitive data into their not so secure computers. It's the perfect storm. The FBI said the top crimes are online scams, saying scammers have been exploiting the COVID-19 pandemic. Be assured, this will likely get worse in 2022. Oh, Interpol had this to say about the rise in cybercrime. Cybercriminals are developing and boosting their attacks at an alarming pace, exploiting the fear and uncertainty caused by the unstable social and economic oh. situation created by COVID-19. Can we just take a second? To just has the pandemic helped push us further into a kind of? Just remember that this this is a video. It might not be. It might. It's not, not real life. It's a video, it is, guys. But like, it's, but it's, it's not Tuesday. Real life. It's Tuesday, the fourth of January. I don't know when they're going to be watching this. I didn't need this. No, so neither did I. Like, like, yeah, like you made oh. it. Like you've had. Oh, happy New Year. You got all these resolutions. Yeah, it'll be a great yeah, year. What? And then you just go. Yeah, so what's Simon reacts and you just get this video. Well, you I'm know sorry, what? world's a cruel, pl a cruel place. Yeah, you live and then you die. It's the harsh reality of the world, my friends. No, fuck it. In dystopia, Big Brother watches over us. Human Rights Watch warns us that governments might exploit the pandemic to instate authoritarian rule, saying that we might be walking into a kind of surveillance reality of the new world order and intrusiveness. While the USA has, for the most part, pushed back against the use of surveillance tech, such as facial recognition software, the authorities want it very much. Other countries, such as China and Russia, have already been using this tech to monitor folks in the name of stopping the spread of the virus. But of course, monitoring us and telling us where we can and can't go might be for the greater good of mankind. After all, we need to get a handle on this virus. Nonetheless, in terms of general well-being, people don't usually like being tracked and traced and told where to stay all the time. As Human Rights Watch says, any deployment of technology should be rooted in human rights standards, centered on enabling people to live a dignified life. She got Let's back. Let's face it, though. In 2022, <laughs> even if you want to go to certain places in the world, there will likely be some added restrictions. Again, this is for the greater good, but it certainly can't be it's seen as a off. positive in terms of how we live. All of these problems it will become traveling. much more insignificant yeah. if Earth is oh, hit a very by a killer asteroid. View, but I don't care. In October 2022, one of them oh. is going to approach Earth. Its name is what? Didymos. While that sounds like a cute little Japanese oh. cartoon character, even the asteroid's small 500-foot-wide satellite mood, Dimorphos, could be capable of wiping out some of our cities. You don't oh. need to worry too much. NASA's already launched something called the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, which was described by the New York Times is a 1,200-pound refrigerator that will knock the asteroid off its path. This is a giant right. leap for mankind, as one scientist said. It's kind of a big milestone for our species, like the Do dinosaurs. Not, bro, they we're defending Earth. Do not is actually it's cool that is. Be concerned about that cool that is, bro. <laughs> They're just deflecting it. Okay. But frankly, knowing NASA is firing things at an Earthbound asteroid is significantly frightening in itself. As nah, it's cool. That's time, good, yeah. You probably read the reports. Have you seen the new film that's called like, Don't Look Up? Nah, no, I, I need to watch it. Though. We don't yeah, know the numbers for 2021 it. just yet, but we might ask if this trend will continue, especially since oh, we're well, told inequality and income loss has been on the rise. It seems murder was the crime that saw the major rise as well as domestic violence, with many other rates of serious crime dropping. The data shows us that homicides weren't spreading out more, but that they were rising in number in places where they already were high homicide rates. No. Another very negative Liverpool. effect of the pandemic has been its <laughs> impact on the rapid increase of homelessness across the globe. <laughs> if homelessness wasn't already a huge problem in the USA, in 2021, the Seattle Times wrote an article stating a recession following the coronavirus pandemic could cause twice as much homelessness nationwide. It cited a study which said this pandemic-induced recession and mass loss of jobs could see homeless numbers go through the roof in 2022 and 2023. And if life wasn't hard enough for the homeless, oh, they're well, often yeah, the prey for people. serial killers. Yeah, right. we haven't got yep. rid of those folks yet. <laughs> in fact, in 2021, normal. some media reported that there are 4,000 unidentified serial killers dead or alive right. in the U.S., although only 50 the living US killers are active. These are the numbers given by something called the Murder Accountability Project. We guess the good thing about the increase in surveillance technology we use will be that those serial killers will have a much harder job getting away with it. 
Experts on serial killers have said perhaps some guys get arrested after their first murder these days, but in the past, such people might have gone on to make a name. You know, it's so weird, right? It's those, you know, the, the well being of ourselves, the lineup society, thing where there's we can look forward a murderer to next year. to people, and then they're like pointing out which one's the murderer. Like the other four Donnies are stood next to a murderer in that room. And they're in yeah. like a safe environment, in a room where I don't like, care, I bro. Do you never know what that like, murderer is gonna do. He could, he might just punch you in your throat and you're done. Yeah, like if I was in a very safe room with a paedophile, bro, I'd be like, ugh, like you're a paedophile. Like, like, yeah, you it's like you're in a kids, safe place, right? but it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're still yeah, like a stat, them. like you probably walk past or encounter. Yeah, 100%. Like, 100%. Imagine if the person wow. pointed at you as well. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen, though? Are you, would you get, like, you do 30 years in prison, something you actually didn't do? The police know that you are just a lookalike. If you know what Say I mean? Like, they just brought, yeah, they brought people in. So then, because then, because sometimes you get like. People threaten the witnesses, don't they, on the outside? So they'll just say, go in there and pick like a random person. So, I don't know. Decreasing living standards and possible world ending events. 2022 might not be a great year just because the world is still shaking from something that first wobbled it back in 2019. Uh, you need to watch uh, why Spanish flu killed well, 50 I mean, million people. you know, you, as long as we can avoid the asteroid, the murderers, and COVID, it sounds like it's going to be a great year. Well, guess what, lads? We're alive, aren't we? So let's just fucking cheers to that. Let's make it the best year ever and prove the video wrong.